and welcome back to Super at 60. Welcome to my home and welcome to my kitchen. Well, today I am gonna make for you the iconic copycat Cracker Barrel Meatloaf. Guys, this is the meatloaf. This is the dish that people go to Cracker Barrel for. They sit on the front porch and rock in those rocking chairs and long lines waiting to get in so they can order themselves a wonderful plate of the iconic, it truly is, uh, meatloaf at the Cracker Barrel. Well, I have the recipe and I'm sharing it with you today and I'm cutting it in half because it is just for Lou and I. And uh, yeah, so it's not only a fantastic recipe you're gonna get today from a copycat Cracker Barrel, but it's for two and so many of you, so many of you have been pleading with me, Darlene, please, can you make recipes for two? Can you please make recipes for two? So guess what? Today I'm making a recipe for two, me and you. All right, I've got just about everything that I need out here and ready to go. Um, the one thing that I'm gonna throw in that's a little bit different from the recipe, it's not gonna matter in the taste one bit, it's just different because I have it. Yesterday, uh, I dehydrated, oh, a boatload of onions, and this is what I got. Aren't they beautiful? They're just beautiful. I'd say this is about four very large onions, yeah. And they smell so good, smell that, that just smells like a little bit of onion heaven. <laughs> And yeah, no, we're not onion crazy people. I know you guys know that, but um, we'll eat it this way. My husband, I can sneak this in so much stuff, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he's gonna be so happy when he walks through that back door tonight and sees that there's a meal. First, he'll smell it, he'll smell it, and then he'll, uh, he will uh, be very, very pleased. So let's get started with this Cracker Barrel copycat, delicious, iconic meatloaf for two. All right, here I'm just gonna start with a uh, nice clean bowl and I'll go ahead and crack uh, two eggs in here. That's what I'm gonna need. Now, I will uh, have the exact recipe below, the full recipe. Uh, the full recipe calls for a pound and a half of ground beef, um, but I don't, I'm not using that today. Um, I have about, uh, I'd say about a half a pound little less than a pound. So, I've kind of cut the recipe in half and maybe just a little bit less than that. But don't worry, I will have the full recipe below, just like I always do, guys, always, so don't panic. You'll have it. All right, there we go. Whoops, so two eggs. I'm just gonna put that right in there. And now we need, now this is something you absolutely cannot change up. Don't use breadcrumbs, don't use saltines, don't use club crackers. You have to have the buttery taste of the Ritz crackers, okay? And just crush them up. They don't have to be perfect. They crush very well, actually. I think they crush even better than saltines or anything else. They just, real fast, just like this. And they're gonna go right into that wet egg. And uh, my mother-in-law, she used to, when she makes her meatloaf, she takes bread and she cuts it all up, even just not even dried out, and she puts it in a little bit of milk, and she just lets it sit there and just absorb all that milk till it's almost like a mush, and that's what she uses in her meatloafs, and they are absolutely delicious as well. Um, but this meatloaf, uh, we just love it. We absolutely love it. All right, so let's go ahead and put that right in here, just like that, and I'll just toss it around just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna put in those beautiful dehydrated onions. Not too many. All right, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, those crackers are gonna, the uh, crushed crackers are gonna get all nice and soft in there. And the onions are gonna 
rehydrate as well, but you'll just use regular onions. Unless you have some dehydrated uh, chopped onions, that will work just fine. I find that the flavor is just mm, so intense when you use the dehydrated, I love it. In fact, I have my dehydrator out on the back porch in the summer house today, and it is dehydrating four big trays of green peppers and orange peppers and yellow peppers and red peppers. Yeah, I got them all out there. I got the whole gamut of peppers going on my back porch. All right, and uh, now green peppers. Yes, I do want to add some green peppers, and I wanted to show you this great little gadget I got. Now, I know it's been around for a while, but it sometimes takes me a while to get it. It's called the Vidalia Chop Wizard, you know? I don't have, uh, I'm not sponsored by this at all. This is, I'm not trying to sell this or anything like that. Um, I just wanted one because it really works well with my, uh, when I dehydrate, it keeps everything, you know, at, at a uniform size. So I'm just gonna chop up a few little uh, green peppers. Sometimes I have to give it a little push, especially when you use the fine, I'm using the fine, fine one in here. Now, something funny about the green peppers and this recipe is, sorry about that noise. Eh, I'll put a little bit more in because we like green pepper. Um, the original recipe of the copycat, and I had that too, um, calls for a green pepper. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing the recipe happening again. And no more, no more green pepper. It just isn't in there anymore. So I don't know what happened, but maybe people just didn't like it. And so anyway, you can omit, you can absolutely omit this green pepper, okay? But look how beautifully that chops. I mean, it's just perfect. And there's another blade too that goes uh, with it also, and it's just a little bit bigger. That's all, just a little bit bigger. And I've been using that one too. Oh, I've just been having so much fun with it. So if you want a new kitchen gadget and they're very inexpensive, get yourself one. You chop a lot of vegetables. All right. So I'm gonna mix that green pepper in there. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I can smell it already. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. But again, you can leave those green peppers out if you would prefer. All right, uh, let's add a little bit of milk. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of milk here. <clears throat> this is the way you need to start a meatloaf kind of a soupy mixture, even with your bread, whatever breading you choose. Try desperately not to put in dry breadcrumbs when you're making a meatloaf. It's not, it's not good, it's not good. All right, a little bit of salt, just a little pinch of salt, and a little pinch of black pepper. Okay, and each time just give it a little stir because you want it nice and mixed up in there when you get your uh, meat going in there. All right, I have some shredded cheddar cheese. You wanna make sure that you use that as well. And I did shred this myself. So that is always best, guys, always best. I'm gonna go for, oh, about two ounces, maybe a little bit more. I like cheese. I like it, I like cheese. Okay, and what I do with my fork, here it is. All right, beautiful. So that is our wet mixture right there. That's just what it looks like. It's absolutely beautiful. Now I'm gonna take my meat, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pour this on top of this, just like that. Just get it all out, every bit of it. If you wanna use a spatula for this, that's fine too. That's fine. All right, and now what most people do is get in there with their hands and uh, I'm so tempted right now, I can't hardly stand it. But I'll go ahead and use my fork, at least for the moment, until I can't take it anymore. All right, I did go ahead and use my hands and you can see the mixture is just beautiful. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to my little bowl here, just like that. Just get it all out. Oh, this is gonna be so, Delicious. I'm trying really hard not to use my other hand, <laughs> but it is not easy. I want to just dig right in there. Shape it beautiful. You know, take your time with a meatloaf. Don't over mix a meatloaf. As you can see, I'm just kind of gently patting it. <clears throat> this is how you have a beautiful, beautiful 
moist meatloaf. And there we go. Okay. Oh, doesn't that look just beautiful? I think that just looks gorgeous. I, I really do. All right, now no glaze. Don't put any glaze on it right now. Just leave it be. And uh, we'll take care of that glaze. And we'll put it on at just the right time, I promise. All right, I'm gonna put the meatloaf in my oven uh, at 350 for about 20 minutes. Uh, it is a smaller meatloaf, like I said, it's cut in half. Um, wow, yeah, it makes a very large meatloaf. So if you're having company and you wanna serve a meatloaf, uh, this is a fantastic recipe. I guarantee you somebody, if not everybody, is gonna ask you for the recipe. Um, but uh, for now, since I've cut it in half, just because it is for two, it is going to the oven for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. At that time, I'll show you, we'll take it out, we'll put our glaze on, we'll pop it back in, and it's gonna be time to eat. Let's go ahead and make that delicious glaze. I need about, uh, for me and for my wee little meatloaf, I'm gonna need about a quarter of a cup of ketchup, just regular old ketchup. And I need, um, let's see, what else do I need? I am gonna put in, I am gonna put in some brown sugar. See my little sugar bears in there? They keep my uh, brown sugar so, so nice and soft. <clears throat> All right, so about a quarter cup of brown sugar. I don't want too much sugar. So actually, I think that's plenty. Okay, and a um, little bit of yellow mustard. Use yellow mustard. But if your favorite mustard in the whole wide world is a brown spicy mustard, go ahead. Now, just a little bit of mustard, about a teaspoon. And that ought to do just fine. <clears throat> and there's your glaze right there. And it's going to be delicious. Absolutely delicious. All right, I just took it out of the oven. It is hot, hot, hot. So I'm going to just real quickly here take my glaze. And you can use a good old pastry brush if you want. Just a spoon will do just fine. Nothing fancy. It's just a meatloaf. But oh, wow, is it ever a good one. I can't wait for y'all to try this. I hope that you will. It's got everything yummy in here. Just everything in the whole world you can imagine is yummy in here. And it makes one of the most wonderful dinners. Just perfect dinner on a hot summer night. Uh, have some sliced up tomatoes over here. Nice and cold I'm gonna serve with this. Um, as you saw, I cut up a bunch of potatoes. I'm just gonna have cut up buttered potatoes. Maybe I'll throw some herbs over the top, some fresh herbs. And uh, yeah, that is gonna be one delicious dinner and I will show you the minute it is ready. All right, this is gonna go back into the oven now for, uh, I'd say another 20, maybe 25 minutes, if that. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it, close eye, because I don't wanna overbake it. And I don't want to underbake it, so I'll let you know exactly. Right now, it is at 20 minutes. Look at those potatoes and the meatloaf. They're still steaming. They're so yummy. Oh my goodness, look at that meatloaf. Isn't that incredible? Look, you can see the cheese popping through. Everything is just exactly what I just have to have some of that glaze. Look how wonderful that looks. Isn't it just delicious? The green peppers just coming through there. Oh, and that glaze on top, that sweetness. I can't wait, here I go. Hmm, I'm gonna wait for this all day long. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, and just simple, 
simple little mm, boiled potatoes to go with it and some beautiful fresh garden fresh uh, tomatoes they're not from my garden but oh oh they ever good it just tastes so good guys i haven't had like real food in quite a while you know because i've been trying to get over this thing but mm, i gotta tell you i just have to tell you the truth the honest truth i always tell you the truth that is the finest meatloaf you will ever put in your mouth. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today in my kitchen here at Super at 60. I had a fantastic time. Finally, I could be back in my kitchen making a meal and Lou is ready to come in that door just about any second. And uh, he's gonna be one very, very happy, happy man. This is one of his favorite meals. Um, I think a lot of people enjoy meatloaf. I hope that you'll make it. The full recipe, I did leave it below for you so that you can make the full recipe this was just half the recipe and you can see what a good size it was just for half. It's really almost more, more than just for two. I'm peeking at it right now and that could easily feed a family of four for at least one meal. I don't know that there'd be any leftovers, but a family of four with uh, four hungry people, I think you could easily make it with a one pound. But go ahead, follow that recipe below and you'll have yourself probably your favorite new meatloaf. Let me know if you make it. Um, I would I would really like to know that. So thank you again for being here and I'll see you guys real soon. So bye now and Lord bless.